Well, good afternoon. Glad to have you here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. My name is Doug Rice for the Performance Racing Network. This will be our first official announcement of the weekend. I'm sure there will be many more to follow. And by the way, this is a uh, sponsorship announcement, but Martin's time at the end of this will also serve as his NASCAR availability for this weekend. So please keep that in mind. Uh, Thrilled and honored to be here. We have some special guests. Joe Garoni is here, of course, president of Furniture Row Racing. Joe, nice to have you here. Thank you very much for being on hand for this. And we will jump right into our program. I want to introduce now Jose Costa. He is the brand president of Driven Brands Paint and Collision Division. Jose, nice to have you here today. Thank, thank you for being on board. Thank you, Doc. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Martin. We're very, very excited about this opportunity to partner with you. Driven Brands is the parent company of Meineke, Mako, Carstar, and about 2,500 locations across North America, so we're extremely excited about this opportunity. Thank you. Well, you weren't lying when you said your comments were going to be free, weren't you? Thank you, Jose Costa. Up next is Jason Ryan. Jason is the president of Mako. Nice to have you here, Jason. Yeah, thank you, Doug. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Mako, we are really excited to be part of this partnership uh, with Furniture Row and with Martin. With everything that's happened over uh, recent history here, uh, it couldn't be a better opportunity for us, so we're, we're very excited about it. Mako uh, is going to be celebrating its 45th anniversary uh, coming next year. During that period of time, we've painted over 25 million vehicles. You know us for uh, collision repair and auto painting, so whether it's an accident or you need to a makeover on an older vehicle, that's what we do. Um, our system is really excited about this as well. In fact, we're having our national convention here in Charlotte next week. So we'll have hundreds of franchisees uh, descending on Charlotte. And in fact, because of this partnership, many are coming in early to, to be part of it this weekend and celebrate the partnership again with, with Martin and Furniture Road. So we're thrilled to be part of it and we're really excited. Thank you. And of course, I think most of you know the guy in the middle. It is now my pleasure to introduce Martin Truex Jr., driver of the Furniture Row Mako number 78 Toyota this weekend here at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Bank of America 500. Uh, before we get into the sponsorship talk, talk about the momentum and the role that this 78 team is on right now, Martin. Well, yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty incredible, really, the last five weeks just to uh, you know to be part of. You know, such a historic run for our race team. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. We've been working hard. Um, it's always fun when you're winning races and running up front each and every week. And you know, we're here at Charlotte to hopefully continue that. So excited about the weekend. Uh, obviously, this is a big way to start the weekend for us. Uh, announcing another partner on the 78. It's um, really cool to have a Charlotte-based company that's uh, that's nationwide and, and in Canada be a part of our race team and. Uh, Hopefully we'll give these guys uh, something to be excited about this weekend. Now, Martin, you know you're kind of crushing your idea as the underdog candidate now because you guys have always been the one-car operation west of the Mississippi, and now you've come out, you've won two chase races, and you're a lot of people's favorites to win the title. How does it, how does it feel to be in that position as opposed to being on the other side of the equation? feels a little bit different, but really our mindset hasn't changed, and it's really been the same as it was last year. I think that... You know, ultimately, um, we feel like we're in a lot better position this year to to go win the championship. You know, last year I think our goal was, okay, how do we how do we get to Homestead, and you know, what do we do to put ourselves in our best position to you know have a shot at it? I think this year it's it's more okay. You know, how do we not screw this up and make sure we get there so we can have a chance to uh, to show everybody what we're made of. So it's a little bit different mindset, but our approach and our mentality is really the same, and that's you know, take it one week at a time try to do the best we can each week and um, you know hopefully at the end of the day we'll, uh, we'll be where we want to be. All right before we open up this for questions talk about your new partnership here with Mako for this weekend. Well yeah I mean obviously <clears throat> obviously we're, we're really excited uh, this has been a such a big season for everybody at Furniture Row Racing bringing on new partners and you know this is just another step in that direction so uh, you know again um, you know great nationwide and and you know even in Canada, a uh, huge company, um, you know, it's uh, it's definitely a, an honor to be associated with such great people. And, you know, again, it's, um, you know, when companies like this, uh, you know, partner with our team, it's great for the sport. It's obviously great for our team. Um, and I think other, other people take notice. And uh, hopefully it's something that, that we continue to build on and uh, have a great partnership down the road. And it's, uh, you know, it's an honor to, to have such a great company on board with our program. 
Okay, we'll open up the floor for questions right now. Uh, we're going to go over here first. Uh, please keep in mind this also services his NASCAR availability. And just as a refresher, the last time we were here and for the Coca-Cola 600, uh, he led 585 miles of a 600-mile race. Let's go. We'll start over here with Brian, then we'll go to Stan, then back to Woody. Brian Nelson with uh, MRN. Martin, so you really blast off in the chase, a lot of altitude between you and the other competitors uh, winning too and dominating the way you did. But with the reset now and having, you know, no safety net going forward, how do you describe, you know, your, your position, uh, you know, not having that to fall back on anymore? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that, um, you know, it would be nice to be in this position and, and, you know, have those two wins kind of mean something. But, you know, at the same time, you understand going in, that's the way it works. And, you know, I think for us, this, this is, you know, just a repeat of Chicagoland weekend. You know, we're here, we know everybody's at zero, and we've got to perform. So I think we're prepared. Um, you know, Charlotte's a great place for us. It's been a great track for us the past couple of years. Um, Kansas next week is the same way, and, and we're hoping to capitalize on these two racetracks that we know we can perform at because everybody knows Talladega's looming uh, in week three of this round. So I don't think anyone wants to go in there and, um, you know, have to worry about, you know, do I have to finish 10th or 12th or whatever. You never know what can happen there. So uh, our mindset is really the same as it's been, just come out here and perform like we know we can, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that. All right, let's go to Stan, and we'll get back to Woody Kane. Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box for the gentleman from Mako. Sir, number one, do you remember the instance which made you look at becoming a sponsor in the world of NASCAR? And number two, what is it that drew you to this driver? That's a, that's a good question. Um, it's something we've always talked about. I mean, Mako being an automotive aftermarket brand, I think has a natural um, relationship with NASCAR. We relocated our offices to Charlotte four years ago, and ever since then we've been talking with NASCAR in varying degrees. Uh, my biggest disappointment is we didn't do something sooner uh, because Martin's on one heck of a roll. So uh, we've been thinking about it a long time, and we're looking forward to taking this to the next step as well. Well, we've, we've been meeting with Martin to talk about all kinds of things, and uh, one of them was we were very interested early on. Uh, we've met with other drivers. We, we think Martin is a great guy, down-to-earth guy. Some of the folks from our company uh, know some of the history of Martin, uh, being from New Jersey, and uh, really you spend a little bit of time with him, and it's not hard to figure out that he's somebody you want to do uh, a partnership with. Woody came with him, and Martin, number one, are you bringing the same car back you had in May, and, and number two, Describe the differences, and everybody says this track is the most temperature sensitive on the circuit, what you faced in May versus what you'll see Saturday. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, <clears throat> first off, yes, it's the same car we had here in the 600, also the car I believe we won Chicago with. So it's definitely got some good history. But uh, I'll be honest, I can't tell the difference between that car and, and you know, say the car we raced last week. I mean, the, the way they build these things now, they're all exactly the same, and you can't tell anything about you know cars being different like you used to back in the day this car have a certain feel that car have a certain feel now you know it's like they can just completely reproduce them so uh, with that said with the with the uh the track record this car has had we're obviously optimistic but um you know charlotte i think one of the biggest challenges is coming here today on friday practicing at 1 30 in the afternoon the sun's coming out now um, and then we race saturday night we're going to have some rain most likely at some point between now and then so um, Charlotte being temperature sensitive, being sensitive to the sun being out, you, know, you have to understand what you need in your car today in practice, what it needs to feel like, and the things you need to look for to, uh, to be able to race well Saturday night. Uh, and that's not easy, it's pretty difficult. So uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, but we've got good notes from last time we can go off of, and uh, we'll definitely lean on that for sure. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. How was it for you when you get the win and another one and another one and, and all of a sudden all the attention is on you and you're never going to get the big head but every time you turn on sports talk radio on Sirius XM or you read a headline it's about Martin Truex Jr. How do you kind of keep that? Do you not listen to it? Do you just enjoy it and relish it? Um, to be honest with you I you know I, I think it's really exciting for our team it's a lot of fun to be a part of this right now but at the same time you have to you know keep your focus on the next race you can't dwell on the fact that we won two races in the first round because as of today it doesn't really matter so we have to focus on charlotte um, all those things are great they're great for our team 
um, helping us bring on new partners like Mako. These are the kind of things that we've been working towards all year long. So now it's you know time to get it done again. Everything's reset, like I said, and um, you know all that stuff doesn't matter. So it's it's nice, but um, you know at the end of the day we need to perform now and, and we need to perform this weekend. I will go with Jen. I think we got three questions in a row here on this row, and then we'll get back over to Jeff Gluck. Jenna Fryer, AP Martin. You had your career has been interesting, and in that. It was full of promise and then you didn't always get it and then you'd get close and then not now that you're here what does it feel like does it feel any different from the early times uh, in a lot of ways yes it feels a lot different um, it's it's almost like okay finally we're here now how do we make sure we can keep it going because you you understand how easy it is to be on the other side of it and how hard you work to get here so I think really your focus is just, you know, what, what can I do to continue this role, continue this momentum? I think a lot of it obviously is being part of a great team. Everybody knows in this sport, it is a team sport. And I'm just honestly thankful I'm getting to show my talent, my capabilities behind the wheel um, and focused on, on continuing this, you know, this role that we're on and, and what's it going to take to do that. So um, I don't take it for granted. I know that in two weeks it could be gone you just never know in this sport so i'm just really living in the moment enjoying myself uh, i love working with my race team and um, just trying to enjoy it because like i said you never know when it could come to an end jessica ruffin with nascar.com with you guys being so dominant here back in may and this momentum that you guys are riding how much confidence does that give you heading into this weekend does that give you a bit a bit of a leg up on the competition do you think I don't know that you ever have a leg up on this competition in the Sprint Cup Series, but um, you know, for sure it gives us confidence. I, I think we, we feel like we can use a lot of what we learned here last time around uh, to be competitive. But at the same time, that was you know, a long time ago. There was a lot of races between then and now, and everybody's worked on their stuff to get better. We, we certainly have. So I think for us, the focus is you know, how do we take what we learned there, apply the things we've learned since, and try to be better overall. Uh, Bob Hawkers, ESPN, with the um, with the weather forecast and everything, are you do you enter today uh, practicing for qualifying or race, and are you practicing for a race at night or in the day? I'm not sure. <laughs> we we're definitely going to do a little bit of race trim today, which is uncharacteristic for our group. And um, you know, I I really don't know. I mean, I feel like we're based on weather forecast. I feel like we're going to race Saturday night, but. You never, you never know with the weather. So I mean, it's it's really hard to say. Um, I, I think that one thing that we feel good about is last time here we practiced really well in the daytime, and we were able to still race obviously really well at night. So our car seemed like it was, um, you know, worked well in all weather conditions, which was good. That's something that uh, you know should certainly benefit us, especially if we do have to race on Sunday. All right, please keep in mind we're going outside for a car unveiling when we wrap up the uh, questions here from the media. Let's go back to Jeff Gluck, and then we'll go over here to Jerry and take a couple of more after that. Jeff? Uh, I'm wondering, you know, there's been a lot of talk about um, whether the regular season winner deserves um, some sort of reward in the first round, whether it's a buy or pit stall selection or whatever. And I know the Drivers' Council's been pushing that. What's your take on that? Does the regular season winner deserve something? I think they should get something. I mean, it's so difficult to be the points leader at the end of the first 26. I think that you know there's definitely something there. Now, what that should be, I'm not sure. I've heard a lot of opinions and read a lot of things, but I think there should definitely be something. Um, I also think if you win more than one race in the first round, you should get a bye in the next round. <laughs> 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 Wonder why. Uh, let's go over here to Jerry. Jerry Jordan, former Station Network, kicking the tires. Uh, for the gentleman from Mako, and then also uh, Martin, if you, if you want to weigh in, uh, you're getting on the, his car at a pretty prime time. Uh, he's kind of on a roll. How how big of an impact is that for you guys, and, and to buy into the, the NASCAR uh, sponsorships with with Martin? And uh, you know, what what do you hope to gain from that, and Martin? How does how does it feel to, to be attracting this attention? Well, I think, you know, again, I'll go back to earlier that for us, I mean, it's, this has been a huge year, uh, bringing on new partners, um, you know, making our race team stronger each and every week. And, uh, you know, we're just excited that we're in this position. Um, Barney and Joe have worked, you know, 11 years in this sport with Furniture Row only on the car. And to, to be bringing in new partners is such a big deal for us, for Barney, 
um, you know, to bring on a, a Charlotte-based company that has such a great history and a great track record and, you know, is really number one in their field is, um, is something that we're really proud of. So, you know, I can't speak for him, but, um, you know, this is, I, I can't tell you how big of a deal this is for us. Um, all the partners we brought on this year have been such a big part of our program and, and making us stronger and helping us get to where we are today. Um, if we continue to do this, we can continue to be around for a long time, be competitive, and, and do the things we want to do. And hopefully we're, we're bringing a lot of value back to our partners. And um, you know, so far, it seems like everybody's really enjoyed the partnership. OK, we'll uh, go to Kelly Bartik, and we'll wrap it up uh, by going back to Steve Post in the back. Kelly? Kelly Bartik, WCCB. Martin, you've had four wins this season. What was the best memory or best part about winning here in Charlotte? Just uh, to win at Charlotte's huge. I mean, at Crown Jewel event, Coke 600, it's, uh, you know, those are the type of races you want to win as a driver, you know, your entire career. So, I mean, it's, it's just been such a fairy tale season to win here, to win at the Southern 500, to win at Dover, which I consider my home track last week. Um, so many things stick out about that weekend, but uh, it was just, it was just a great week. And, uh, you know, those are those are wins you never forget. You know you, that trophy is still sitting in my house, and it's it's something every time you walk by, you understand what it took to get here and what it took to win that race, and and how many times I've tried before I finally got it. So uh, definitely a special one. You do wind up in the Speedway Club for a champagne toast, also. I did. That was that was pretty good. Yeah, it's like two in the morning, but still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were on the radio about two thirty, right? Yeah. Well, it was right. well worth it. Let's go back in the back, Steve Post, Steve. Luckily, he's the one guy that doesn't need a mic in the room. So. I can hear you. Uh, no, it, it really, look, we love NASCAR and, and we specifically uh, love the Charlotte Motor Speedway. We have an event here next week as part of our convention. Our, our entire franchise system base is uh, big NASCAR supporters. So it's a, it's a natural connection. Martin just happens to be one of the individuals we've talked to over time. And for us to have an opportunity to be part of this winning team has been great. So we didn't think through uh, the locations of the teams, but we did about the, uh, the driver. Well, thanks to everyone for your participation. This